A commenter expressed that they had recently experienced the loss of someone special, the loss of a loved one. And they wanted me to give my thoughts on tragedy and mourning. And it really got me thinking about memories. What exactly are they? Of course, you can Google, you can flip open any type of uh, book on psychology and neuroscience and get your, your standard textbook definition on what a memory is. But to anyone who has a beating heart, those definitions will ultimately be meaningless to you because sterile scientific language does not interface well with the actual lived human experience. But what exactly are memories? We kind of have them categorized and we have all of these different designations, but there is the unconscious memory and the conscious memory. The main difference is you can actually experience the conscious memory. For example, the unconscious memory would be you knowing how to ride a bike. This is kind of like a data file that always exists within your brain. And whenever you need it, your brain just points to it and you know how to do it. But the conscious memory, this would be more akin to the actual memory you have of your father teaching you how to ride a bike. And the interesting thing about this conscious memory, which is the the memory that we all talk about when we mention memories in our day-to-day -day lives. The interesting thing about the conscious memory is that it is highly manipulatable. We see this all the time within police work. Detectives kind of specialize in this with their various interrogation techniques. This is why they ask you the same types of questions rephrased in different types of ways over a long extended period of time to try and poke and prod around in your memory to see if anything changes. For example, when you remember your parent teaching you how to ride a bike, you may remember music overlaid with this experience. You may remember them saying things that they didn't say. Perhaps their vocal intonation was deeper or a higher pitch. This is all because it is infused with the human imagination. And what these types of memories actually are, it is an imaginative recreation of an event that has already occurred. The key word here being imaginative. And the thing about these types of memories is that they are almost always involved with some sort of significant emotional state. Oftentimes, unfortunately, it is some sort of trauma or negative circumstance, but it can be any type of emotion. What these memories are is sort of like a portal to an emotion. It is a door to an emotion. It is a room in which a specific emotion lives. Emotions are incredibly important. I know that we live in this modern time of this logical thinking to where people believe being stoic means locking away and depriving yourself from emotions, but this is quite demonic. As a human being, emotions are quite literally the only thing that you have. The only thing that you possess as a human being is your direct live experience, aka your consciousness. And your consciousness is just a ball or this flux of various emotions. Emotions are sort of like a signifier or a highlighter that something important is occurring. If I told you to tell me, what did you eat for breakfast March 24th, 2004, you, you could never recall that. It's just too specific and it's too lost in the muck and mire. But if that was the last time your mother made you waffles before she passed away, I assure you, you will remember it because it is associated with 
some sort of strong emotions because that's what emotions do. They tell you to pay attention to this part of your story. You are constantly experiencing emotions, some more intense than others. And when you encounter an event that really stimulates this emotional state, this emotional thing that we call the consciousness, your consciousness creates via the imagination a room or some sort of habitation around it. And this is called a memory. And what your life is, is an accumulation of these types of rooms. If you zoomed all the way out, this this giant mansion, these various rooms would form the portrait of your life. Your life is sort of like an art gallery that your conscious can wander around in and explore. And the various paintings or exhibits are these memories that I'm talking about. They are the only thing that you have. All of this occurs to facilitate the direct lived human experience. And what that is, the entire purpose of it is for you to feel something. That is the point to experience. And experience cannot be separated from feeling and emotion. Experience is feeling and emotion. They are one in the same. It's just like with any other story, the entire purpose of any story, the entire purpose of any art is for you to feel something. It is to stimulate your emotions. And when I say emotion, I'm not just talking about, you know, the, the main common ones like uh, hatred, jealousy. It's not that simple. When I say emotion, an emotion is any internal stimulus that incentivizes behavior. This is obviously a wide array of things. That means that yet hatred is an emotion, jealousy, lust, hunger. The list goes on and on. Any sort of internal stimulus that incentivizes some sort of behavior. Whether or not you act out on it is irrelevant. I've said in previous videos that the meaning of your life, the entire human experience is to distill meaning from the infinite complexity of reality. This distillation imprints meaning onto your consciousness. To put this simply, Everything in life, every organism operates based on incentive. It has to have a reason or some sort of stimulation in order to do anything. Otherwise, it wouldn't, it would die. It, that's what death is. Any sort of lack of stimulus, a complete lack of energy. And for the human being, this stimulus is the emotions, the emotion, you could surmise the human life as a series of responding to emotions, a series of satisfying various emotions. This is quite literally written into the very fabric of Buddhism. This is what Dukkha is. This suffering, life is suffering. This is the first noble truth. And what immediately follows it is that this suffering is caused by desire. This is a very primitive or a very crude way of describing the same thing that I am, that rather than saying life is suffering, what I say is life is experience. And this experience is driven by the emotions. Within Buddhism, they say that it is suffering driven by desire. I say it is experience driven by emotions. And this continual or perpetual cycle of constantly 
satisfying your various emotions. And all of these various emotions, as they occur throughout the the length of your life, they are very specific. And your consciousness via imagination just sort of creates an art gallery out of it. And this art gallery is what we call memories. Your life is an unfolding piece of art. And every memory that you have, it kind of exists. I guess you could say it's like this sort of hyperspace to where perhaps the death of your father is the ear and the birth of your child is the smile. And at the end of your life, if you zoom all the way out, you're left with the Mona Lisa and your conscious mind, your consciousness is the painter. And whatever you choose to call this thing that cannot be named, God, Allah, uh, whatever, I term it the mystery. It is performing. It is experiencing some kind of art as well via everything that is taking place in life, that the same way your life is an unfolding piece of art, life itself is some sort of unfolding artwork. This is the closest we can get to understanding it. So if you have experienced some sort of tragedy, some sort of fortune, any sort of intense emotional event or state, it is simply a stroke of a brush in a much larger artistic piece. There are no mistakes in art. There is only emotion. And whatever emotion you are experiencing, it too shall pass and make room for other emotions. The emotions that you are experiencing are simply the strokes of a paintbrush. And with enough of these strokes, what lies at the end is the final piece of art, the gestalt, the birth of the phoenix, the same way that the Mona Lisa isn't just a bunch of oil and paintbrush strokes on a piece of canvas. It is something that we derive meaning from. It is something completely different. This is what your life is. So do not get bogged down on any one brush of the stroke. It is one amongst many, and that many is amongst many others. And this just goes on and on forever, or, for, or at least until the return of the king or whatever singularity you believe that waits for us at the end of time. So I'm going to leave the video here. Please like the video, engage with the content, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you found it interesting. I just posted an exclusive video on my locals page where I give my opinion on what I think happened within the Garden of Eden. And until next time, y'all have a blessed day.